congratulations on the new album. It's called Ultra Mono. It's out on Friday. And I was just my I guess my first question is how do you feel about it coming out with all the stuff going on in the planet? Yeah, it's um it's it's very it's a very strange way to release an album whenever you can't tour it. Um but it's even weirder when the world is <laughs> just falling apart basically so <laughs> for want of a better um, word yes <laughs> yeah but 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 in but in a way like um i mean it's it's really like it's kind of alarming how prescient this album has become how many of the kind of the topics and, and feelings that uh we were presenting on this album have become almost u- ubiquitous with 2020 it's kind of the, yeah. the, the the two go hand in hand so it, uh, it really feels like an album for the, for the time and hopefully that will help um incentivize people and comfort people and give them some form of catharsis but yeah so do you feel that music has the power to actually change people's ways of thinking and whatever and feeling um yeah i mean it, it, it's it's happened you know with us like we've had people contact us and have said that they've reassessed um their their way of thinking and you know that's certainly something that we strive for in our music is that, that we're kind of asking people and asking ourselves to reassess our relationship with um with our with our thoughts around, surrounding these issues you know if we talk about masculinity or yep um for feminism the patriarchy how the government treat people um all that like, good stuff you know, yeah yeah all the good stuff <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to ca- kind of carry with you and especially after the success of the previous especially the last album like you guys were like nominated for a mercury prize or something so did that weigh on your minds when you were making ultra mono uh no not really it's um what Ultramono became for us was that with this success of the last album, uh, the the old demon of uh, self-esteem that is reading criticism of your band oh, uh, re- raised its ugly head and, and, and it's both positive, positive criticism feeds it as much as negative criticism. And what this album became for us was kind of a reassertion of our intentions and a reassertion of our identity as a band and who, who we are. Um, and it's, it's really kind of like a, a restatement of intent. Mm-hmm. And I think it, because of that, it kind of riles people up because we're kind of going back over stuff that maybe people took issue with or, um, you know, still spelling stuff out, still right, sloganeering. Right. Um, <laughs> But that's because that's our intention behind the band. We want to talk plainly with people. We're not. We're not here to kind of n- navigate around stuff. It, it, right. It's to full to on talk confrontational. Plainly. Yeah. <laughs> so talk, speaking talk. of confrontation and communication, does the band itself, between the th- the bunch of you, talk about this stuff, or are you kind of all on the same page and you don't need to discuss it at this point? Constantly, constantly talking about it, and yeah. it's a. Uh, it's an ever evolving dialogue within the band. Like we're, we're five extremely different people. Um, like Joe and I, you couldn't get two more different people. Um, so <laughs> there's, there's a constant uh, debate and, and communication over these things. And also like, you know, you never get it right. No one, no one ever gets it right. Like it's, right. A, it, it's, it, it's, it's evolution and it's constant going to evolve and and we're constantly going to evolve as people as well so um it's necessary to communicate that with each other um and kind of gain kind of a consensus i mean that never happens but it's worth trying sure of course um and so when were the tracks for this record mainly recorded were they fairly recent were they last year one year ago exactly yeah um we were I'm going to say we were nearing our last day. 24th of September was our, was our last day um, in the studio. We wrote most of the songs like two weeks before that. So like it was a strange process with this album because we really, it was the mo- most considered album we had. We really kind of labored over what the concept was and what the, 
um, the kind of driving forces were within the songwriting. And there was a huge amount of trial and error, um, 18 months of it pretty much. And then in the last two weeks, it all kind of came together and these songs came out. Um, and I, you know, that was important for the album because it lends a bit of excitement to it. It's kind of, you're hearing the, uh, when you first listen to a song, you're hearing it for the first time as we are, you're listening yeah. to us listen to it for the first time, which I think adds an excite an, an excitement to the energy of the album. Right, right. And you've got a few guests on the album, so uh, it, it would be, we need to talk about them, especially Warren Ellis. Mm -hmm. I, when I heard he, him playing, he was playing saxophone, isn't he? On the no, he's not. No, no, no. Warren, Warren Ellis makes one tiny contribution to the album, <laughs> which is on grinds, and he goes, hey, in the middle of grinds. <laughs> We're one of the greatest musicians, like my actual hero, like present in the studio, and we got him just to go, hey. That's fantastic. That's kind of the beauty of the album. The, 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 the collaboration that we have on the album was this album really is about distilling idols down to its most essential form right. um, and kind of narrowing everything down into these really simplistic and kind of very straightforward ideas. Um, one of those really kind of important essence of what idols is, is our sense of community um, that we engender amongst the five members of the band, but also with our audience at uh, shows and with, um, you know, on social media and things like that. And it, it felt only right to have that kind of sense of community incorporated into the album. So we've got a group of misfitting people that couldn't be more unlike each other. Like you've got David Yao, um, you've got Jamie Cullum, right. Jenny Beth, <laughs> Warren Ellis. Like these people don't necessarily work on paper. Like it shouldn't really, they shouldn't fit together. Yep. Um, but that's what Idols is all about. All right. Jamie Cullum. I mean, like, how did that happen? Because <laughs> that would not be my. <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird. He's like, um, we met him in an award show in the middle of recording. And he's he's just everything Idols is. He's enthusiastic. He's very open minded and just has a, has a real passion for things. And I think that um, because he doesn't fit and doesn't make sense to be on an idols album he's probably the most appropriate person to be on the right, idols that album. Makes so, sense. <laughs> yeah so uh I, and it was just you know it was we, we had an idea of having a breather the album doesn't give you much chance to to breathe so we added these kind of bits and interludes in between songs cool. And uh, we just wanted some nice gentle piano before yeah, yeah. pummeling in you in the face again. <laughs> And you mentioned your community, which I believe is called the AF Gang. Is that correct? Mm, yes. Yeah. And I, I mean, it must be great to have an org, a, a group of fans that are so into the band. But it also, on another end, might might be kind of something that you have to think about all the time and be and deal with. So, how do you guys deal with the fact that you have this this? We don't group? at all. We completely have a hands off attitude with the AF Gang. They created it themselves, and it's. It's um, it's their forum, and it wouldn't feel it wouldn't feel right to be um, involved because it would feel like there's, you know, someone that you can nod to and go, "Is this right?" Where the whole purpose of it is supposed to be a very open-minded um, forum where people feel comfortable to share. And I feel that putting the band in in that kind of reduces people's. Uh, willingness to be vulnerable with each other. So, yeah, we take a hands-off attitude. <laughs> Fair enough. That's probably the best Thank way God to go. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. Now, lyrically, you know, you guys are pretty outspoken. you got a lot to say, and people react to it. I'm assuming that Joe is the main driver behind the lyrics, but do you all talk about it and agree on everything or, or at least are aware of the fact that stuff is going to generate talk? Um, yeah, so like what we'll do with an album is we'll really kind of get to the get down to the nitty gritty with the kind of the themes and what's going to come up on the album. Um, and this album, especially more so than any others, was very collaborative in the lyrical um, theme writing. Um, so, you know, Joe actually asked, you know, everyone in the band, well, what do we want to kind of does anyone have a song that they want to sing about rather than it just 
being overarching kind of conversations and things like that that lead towards it. Um, but then because because of what idols is and because what we're trying to do with it, speaking to, you know, our truth, it's important that as Joe is a singer, that he speaks to his own truth. And because a lot of his songs are, are very, very personal in nature, it's it would be completely wrong of us to interject and to change or to edit that. So um, kind of once he's set on his path, we let him go. And... <laughs> um that kind of is nice because it removes a lot of the responsibility some of the time sure, so, sure. but um <laughs> it, it it weighs heavy on his head i know that for sure um but he, no better person to do it really he's you know he, he's one of he's an amazingly honest person I've, I've never met anyone that was so honest um and and introspective so you know he's he's willing to share with people this so we gotta let him yep yep now because of the virus stuff and lockdowns all over the place you guys i assume haven't played out much recently but i did see that you did a a live streaming thing from abbey road i gotta I got ask mm -hmm. you how that was what was that what was that like to be in there it was probably it was just a very very difficult thing to do it was one of the most difficult performances we've ever had as a band and we played to four people in a room in in switzerland before um <laughs> it uh it was uh yeah it, it was tough like it, it just it became apparent almost immediately you know the elephant in the room there's no one here and there's not going to be everyone yeah. is watching it on screens just like we're we are watching each other now and that exchange of energy is missing and it's uh it's a fundamental characteristic of of an idol show is that exchange of energy that's the most important aspect of of our right. show like with with without it it um you almost feel like it, it's kind of terrible in a way like you know we're we're, we're <laughs> You know, th there's a lot of um, we 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 we're very expressive, and that means that sometimes the musicality lacks, and it's very dangerous, and it could all fall apart. But because because the audience is in on that, and because the audience is invited in on that experience, um, we're all in it together, and it's a shared experience. Whereas on a live stream, the gap is yeah yeah, <laughs> it's massive yeah I it's hear huge. You. Looking forward. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah. Great. Good luck with it's the record. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.